Welcome back. Today we've got some decently warm temperatures. We're sitting about 22 to 23 degrees Fahrenheit outside, which is great for us because inside the greenhouse, we're sitting right around 70 degrees. We're sitting about 69, 70 degrees inside the greenhouse and that thermometer is in the shade. I'm gonna walk down and check out our thermometer that is in the sun here. And I wanna give a demonstration on our geothermal along with some other ideas that I've been experimenting with because I've had a lot of suggestions to paint my rocks black and I wanted to use some type of non-toxic method and I wanted to show everybody that and I want to kind of see how long term it holds up. So let's jump over here and check out the temperature. We are sitting well over 70 or about 75 degrees in here and that is amazing that's really good temperatures i mean that's in the sunlight and we don't ever keep thermometers in the sun but i like to have one in the shade and one in the sun just to kind of see what the difference is and see what the actual temp is compared to what the temps are in our sunlight now we're doing pretty well with our little solar panel and solar fan running our geothermal i just wanted to show some flow on a decently good day for solar activity here So it's definitely blowing some good air into the greenhouse here. Not exactly how many cubic feet per minute, but this little hose and this little hose are pumping out some good airflow, enough to aid in the heating of this greenhouse. Having 50 degree air coming out of the floor first thing in the morning is better than nothing. So we're able to keep this a little bit warmer than usual. Now I've had a ton of suggestions that I need to cover my rows and I'm going to. I have a bunch of extra poly from when I actually put this poly on. I ordered a bunch of extra and I have my second layer with a bunch of extra on that also. So I'll have tons of poly. I just need to get some poles that I can bend. I wanna use metal so I can reuse them and I can set them and leave them in place even through the summer growing season, even if I'm not going to use a poly over my beds, but I'll still want those in place so I don't have to move them in their ready to go for next winter. What I'm coming down here for is to show our little solar heating box. You can see we've got some black rocks in here and that is a completely all natural paint and I'm gonna talk about that. This up top is still drying these rocks up here. It dries pretty quickly and I wanna see the longevity on this DIY all natural paint. So before I talk about this paint, I wanna take some temperatures. We're sitting about 72 degrees on our little thermometer that is also in the sun inside this box. So the rocks on the floor of the greenhouse in the sun are 54 degrees down here. Let's see what we're sitting in our box. Sitting about 76, 75 on this black rock here. Sitting about 67, 68 on the rock that is not painted. Now that is definitely interesting to me and those are some good readings. We're getting a decent growth in heat just by painting these rocks black. I can feel the sun warming me up in the greenhouse, man. It is nice to have some sunshine with all this cold, negative, snowy weather. So let's talk about our paint supplies. This is our paint right here. This little concoction, only two ingredients in that paint right there. We've got one chicken egg. Now this is a super simple, easy DIY, and we used an egg because it's what we had. We have chickens, so we have free eggs all day long. Now the other ingredient, two ingredients to this paint, is wood ash. We used some biochar and just crushed it to a pulp and basically made powder. So that is our compound that we're using for dye. Now this seemed to work very well on those rocks and it seemed to stick and it seems to be holding and drying and basically like a latex type paint. It's very interesting. So I wanted to show everybody how this goes onto the rock and kind of what it looks like because you guys are just seeing the dried product. So we will take our paint here, slowly start brushing it out. I got a few chunks of charcoal or biochar still in there but for the most part I got it to a nice powder in order to basically mix it well and not have big chunks like I have there so obviously I didn't do the best job but I just wanted to show everybody how that looks and it definitely works it is definitely holding some heat in our box it's a interesting 
idea for painting. I know this has been used throughout the ages. It's not something new that I invented. It's definitely something that is worthwhile looking at if you got something like this where it's not going to be in the water or rain because this is a water soluble paint and it does not store. This cannot be stored. This is one term use. That's why I just made a little bit. I'm going to make up a decent batch and paint all these rocks black and see what kind of heat we're really cranking out of there. Once we get this heat sink all painted up and we really get some heat sinking in there with the black paint. You can use the egg white also. If you're separating the yolk from the white, you can leave the white in a bowl and beat it to a pulp and make it like frothy basically and let it sit out, not refrigerated, let it sit out on the counter overnight or for at least six hours and there will be a liquid at the bottom and you can scrape all the foam off and the liquid at the bottom, the name eludes me right now, but you can mix that with your charcoal, basically same ratio, 50 to 50 and you can add a little bit of water to basically mix it up and dilute it a little bit to get a little better consistency for whatever you're painting. This was a very easy and simple way to get some paint and it was free. We have eggs, we've got biochar. Now I'm very interested to see what kind of longevity that actually holds inside here because we're not getting very much moisture inside our box anymore from condensation or anything. It stays dry in here and it pumps dry air to the other side of our greenhouse. So once I get all these rocks painted, I will bring an update and show what kind of temps we're increasing to on similar days to that I filmed in the past and shown this box and kind of taken temps and some data from it. So I hope everyone found this entertaining and useful and possibly gives you some ideas for what you want to do in your greenhouse. We are doing everything as cheaply as possible to achieve good temperatures without putting any electricity or gas or a lot of money into it. I've got an absolute mess behind me. I'm getting a new compost system allocated. I may just build a big pile over there and run my pipe through it in order to blow some decent heat out of there. We had 90 degrees cranking last week when this pile was still pretty hot. But I'm leaving that fan running because it is still cycling air from the top to the bottom and continually cycling air in the greenhouse. And the next DIY update I will bring is a little mousetrap bucket. I'm trying to make a live mousetrap because I want to replace that real mousetrap behind me. It isn't even doing anything. I haven't caught a mouse in it yet and he's still trashing my kale. It could be a whole family of mice at this point. So I want to build a nice live trap and I will relocate them to a brush pile that's way far away from the greenhouse. I just want to thank everybody for watching these videos and checking out what we got going on. We are continually trying to progress here. As the winter is holding us back, we're only able to do work inside the greenhouse right now. So everybody stay tuned for what we've got coming up next.